Welcome back to the Chasing the Gold podcast. I am Erica Richards, and I'm here with my lovely, lovely co-host. I'm Shadon Larky, ferociously writing as usual. <laughs> I was like <laughs> trying to scribble before we get started. I love that you still write notes. I used to do that for a really long time, but then I have now, I finally have like switched over to the person that like uses the notes app, and I... I, I do still write a lot. Like, I write in my calendar and stuff, but I used to, like, well, and I write in a notebook at work, but not this kind of stuff. I used to write this kind of stuff down, too, but now I just, like, when it comes to me, I have to, like, you know, just put it in my phone, so. I think I'm really lucky that I was, like, finished with school before everything turned digital, because there's something about my brain where I, yeah. like, physically write it down. So if I had to, like, study and have everything on my computer, I think that would be really hard. So. Yeah, do you remember, it like, writing, like, papers essentially like writing them oh yeah I and I was thinking I was at Walmart the other day and I was like looking at all the gel pens and all this kind of stuff and that was always my favorite part of like back to school shopping and I was like kids nowadays don't even need that stuff I know and honestly now I feel like my brain is like moving too fast for my hand and like so sometimes I'll be writing and I'll like forget letters and words and I'm like I know how to spell. Why am I? I'm just like moving too fast, but anyway. I can't spell at all. <laughs> my, if my life depended on spelling, I would be gone. Oh, that's, so yeah. that's so funny. That's funny. Um, okay. Well, before we started recording, I told you I had a question for you. Well, a statement and then a question. And I didn't want to say anything because I wanted your genuine reaction. I have so much all, anxious energy. <laughs> first of all, you're going back to TIFF. Yes. Yeah. Which is super, super, super exciting. Congratulations. I wish I was I, with you. Um, I know. I wish you were going to. I need to figure out a way to drag you. I am very excited to go back to TIFF. I also, there's. I want to go to New York Film Fest so bad. I don't know if I can pull it off, but like. I'm I, I just want I just want to go to film festivals all the time. Same. That's I want to perpetually be at a film festival. That is I feel like my happy place is just sitting at a film festival. But yeah, I'm very excited and they announced the tip lineup today which I haven't had time to fully go through but uh, okay. I'm very <laughs> well, oh, that's, go ahead. that's what I wanted to ask you about because did you see that Night Bitch with Amy Adams is going to be at Tiff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will. I don't know what I need to do to make sure that I'm at that premiere. But I will you need to make sure yeah. you're at that premiere. That's what I want yeah, to talk yeah. about. Uh, I'm well, that'll kind of lead into what we're talking about today. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, no, but I was just gonna say the only reason that I'm lucky enough to go to TIFF is because I have family in Toronto that I can stay with. If I had to pay for housing I don't know if that would be a possibility something I was literally thinking um right before we started recording I just wish more festivals did virtual options and were like easier to access for a whole variety of people but that is another conversation for another yeah day. yeah but yeah I'm very excited yeah I agree well you know what we need to just start thinking about next year and planning ahead and then we can stay with each other <laughs> and yeah lost um, yeah, I know. well mark like mark your calendar and be like I'm doing this like no so listen this year study. this year work has been crazy for me and I've had a lot of travel with work too and it's just like I've like taken on so much at work and I just feel like next year will be better and I really, I also too, I'm just like always wishing I was at a film festival somewhere, somehow. Um, so let's. We'll make it happen. Yeah, we're we're manifesting. Gonna yeah, we're going to, we're going to speak it into the existence. So, um, so today we are going to discuss, cause we've already discussed, um, people that we think are going to get Oscar nominations that have never been nominated. And today we're going to discuss, people that have gotten nominations but have never won so yes this podcast is all about manifesting <laughs> Ma <laughs> manifesting yes. our festival hopes our oscar <laughs> hopes yes um two caveats i guess before we start is i feel yeah. like we both when we were making our list we're looking at people that you know, we think that maybe five ten years so a lot of people that have momentum right now yeah um 
that are sort of in the ether in the conversation. And then we didn't do like repeat wins. So these are first. So the, I think there's a whole other episode we could do about like the Francis McDormand, Emma Stones of the world who are going to come back. But um, yeah. this is just our first timers today. Yeah. Yeah. There is so, 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 so much to talk about. And right now we're just really focusing too on, I think it's important to say like acting nominations. Yes. Yeah. Um, because I think there's also a whole, like, another episode on, like, directing and writing, mm-hmm. you know, like, all the things, really, truly. Um, yeah, so this was, like, easy and hard. We've, like, taught you and I have talked about this. Like, there's a lot of, like, obvious answers, which obviously we're going to go over those. I feel like mine are very obvious picks. But, like you said, they're obvious for a reason. Like, they're, like, it's going it's going to happen, right? Um, and then I think there's some really like inspiring picks, like especially on your list. So mm-hmm. I'm this was harder for me than the nominations. I don't know why. Cool. I just felt like there was like a lot of people that I feel like are on the precipice. Yeah, and like narrowing it down was was difficult. Yeah, I know. There's there's some that I like dropped off that you picked up that I'm really excited about. Um, because I think. And and again, like we could make a list that's like twenty plus people long, right? Like we we you know narrowed it down and chiseled it down um, for sake of nothing. But you people don't want to hear us drone on forever. But maybe you do. So yeah, if you do, we will happily do a part two. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, for real. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start mine off, and I think mine is like a super super obvious pick. If you first of all, if you know me. Second of all, if you've been pay atten- paying attention to the world, and that is um, Margot Robbie. I am, first of all, let me just say, I'm obsessed with this woman. Like, I just adore her in all of the ways. Like, I'm truly obsessed with her. Um, and I just think she is wonderful. And I think she has, like, huge range like I thought she was gonna win for I Tanya that's like Mm -hmm. probably my like is that my I because I we were gonna discuss one of our favorites too right like our favorite I'm trying to think yeah nomination or performance yeah I mean she's just so good in I Tanya and like, I was thinking about it, and I was like, wait, that's right. She wasn't nominated for Babylon, and I don't know how. Like, she was so good in that. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's probably one that will, like, be looked back on, like, how did she not get nominated for this? You know, I feel like that one was really overlooked. The fact that she missed in Wolf of Wall Street has already not oh, aged yes. well. Like, I probably would have just given her, been like, a great debut in the world of Hollywood. Here you go. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and like, but how did you feel about Bombshell? I mean, I'm, yeah, I could go. It's not, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I could go either way on that. Yeah. I look at Bombshell. I'm like, she got nominated for Bombshell, but not. Babylon like what are we doing here people like I don't know but I think that that strengthens your argument because it's like if she can get a nomination for a movie that like that that means that people are paying attention you know yeah yeah so and then of course the huge everyone knows how I feel about the Barbie snub like I'm still like riding for her for that um so yeah, I just I think this is um uh, like an uh, like like we were talking about like an obvious pick, but I also feel like the thing that she's gonna win for is gonna be like a big thing, you know, not where it's like like you know, we think about always like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Where it's like, should he really won for what he won for? Eh, you know, like I think I would have given it for him t- for Titanic, you know what I mean? Um but I feel like when she wins, it's going to be, like, really meaningful and monumental, you know? I hope so. I think there's a lot of actresses that we can – actresses in particular that we can point to that are, like, their wins were not for their best performances. Even, mm-hmm. like, Jessica Chastain, who I adore. Like, I'm so happy that she has an Oscar. But I'm like, Tammy Faye, really? Like, there's so many yeah. like that. My yeah, queen, right. Julianne Moore. So, like, I hope 
that when we look back on Margot's, Margot Robbie's career, and there's going to be at least one Oscar, I'm confident. It's like, I hope it's for something that we can say is some of her best work. Do you think there's a world where she wins for producing before she wins for at- acting? Because she's producing a lot. I know, I know. I was thinking about this. Um, Possibly? I don't know. Or maybe she wins, like, picture an actress in the same... Which is not as likely, unfortunately, but there it could have... That would be awesome. I would would be on top of the world. I would love that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I think this is a super obvious pick, but... For a good reason, right? I think everyone can get behind this one. So what's what's your first pick? Um, I'm so happy that you decided to hand me this person because I was really upset that she was on your list and not <laughs> mine, uh, which is Michelle Williams. I The day that Michelle Williams wins her Oscar will probably go down as like one of the happiest. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody is recording my face. I love her. I honestly could make a very strong argument that she should have an Oscar for Blue Valentine and she mm-hmm. should have an Oscar for Manchester by the Sea. My oh, Manchester by the Sea. My like alternate Oscar his thing that I would like to have done is have Viola go lead for Fences, which I absolutely think she still would have won in lead and then have Michelle win supporting for Manchester by the Sea. Yeah. Um, both of those performances are performances that haunt me. Yeah. I think she also has incredible range. I mean, she was incredible in Fosse Verdon, and she absolutely, like, sweeped that Emmy season. So it's, like, clear that she is capable of a sweep type thing in the right moment. Even yeah. her performance in The Fablemans, which I know, like, a lot of people on the internet had strong opinions about, I really liked. I... I like I just, her in that too. Yeah, I, you know what's funny is like I think about the Fablemans, and I think I felt disappointed by it at first. But like when I like think about it later, I'm like, wait, that was good. You know, I don't know. I think I just sometimes when you have such like expectations for something and it doesn't go exactly how you think it is, I think you miss how good it is in that moment. Because like looking back, I'm like, yeah, that was good. Like there's so very distinct memories that I have of that film like things that like scenes you know and I think that means something that stands for something so yeah I thought she was great in that I would make an argument for her having probably win that I mean I just yeah I think she's phenomenal I think I mean even like in Venom like we've I've talked about this but like actresses that I will see anything like she's one I went to see Venom for her I don't care about Tom Hardy no offense to Tom Hardy but like Mm -hmm. I need to see Venom in a theater for Michelle Williams and I just think she is somebody that's like has the prestige and is well respected and I just it's gonna happen I don't know for what but it I'm very yes Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I had her on my list and she was a hard one to like you know Lists are hard. You know, I sh- I'm i really bad at lists. So I'm even proud of myself for making these lists. You have another one that's coming up that was on my list that I like. It's like, oh, I don't want to let this one go either. But I feel so strongly about the ones I picked. But I think you probably feel that way about my next one, which is Miss Amy Adams. Like, can we just we could have a whole episode about her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm jealous that you and <laughs> As I've said, she is my birthday twin. But this is where we were talking about Night Bitch earlier. Yeah. Um. Do you think that Night Bitch, like, is going to be the movie? Because I, I just have a feeling that it's not. No, I don't, I don't necessarily think that. I'm just excited for her to, like, not, not that she has been out of the scene at all. I just, like, this is such a unique role. And, like, I'm so excited for it because I feel like it's, like, really interesting and strange and like so kind of like out of her comfort zone I think it was out of anyone's Mm -hmm. anyone's comfort zone and I'm just like really excited to see what she does with it you know like I don't know I just love her and I'm like excited for something new with her I think I mean I I think I don't think this is it yeah I think unfortunately just with like the there's been a string of films of hers that have not been 
as good and she's kind of I don't want to say fallen off but not maybe where she was like a decade ago and I've also been thinking about this a lot you know Donald Sutherland passed away recently and I feel like he was one of those actors where people always kind of thought like his Oscar he never even got a nomination and so it was always one of those things where it was like oh his nomination is going to come eventually and it didn't and so I think a lot of times we take for granted, like, oh, everyone is going to have their moment, but that's not really how it works. And so there's a part of me that has this, like, deep-seated fear of, like, what if she never has, you know, what if it just doesn't come to fruition? So I hope that, like, she doesn't, like, I hope we appreciate her while we can, As a, I guess, my... Yeah, you're right. I feel like she's had a couple weird things, like... um and I like read the book, The Woman in the Window, and then the movie just kind of was like kind of silly in a way. I don't know. Like it didn't. Oh, really... yeah. You remember that one? Which, um, there was a lot of Oscar, like before that movie came out, they were like, oh, this might be her Oscar movie. And then it came out and it was not good. Yeah. Well, yeah. the end was super weird. I don't know. I, I was really excited about the book because when the book came out, it was like, oh, like there's all these Hitchcock references in the book like literal like Hitchcock references and I was like mm-hmm. oh I have to read this right because I'm a Hitchcock girly so um and then the movie I just like it was just kind of ridiculous in a way you know um but I mean hill the hillbilly elegy of it all <laughs> oh oh my god true that that movie has cursed us in so many ways so Um, many ways so so many ways so many ways but yeah no amy um i just before i die i want to see amy adams win it off no i just love her i think she's so great and like even things that like she's not been nominated for i mean this woman has six oscar nominations like and all the things that she's been nominated for i love but i even think about I mean, obviously, Sharp Objects is not a film, but I think about um, the one that I love that, like, I feel like this is a very polarizing film and you either love it or you... If you're going to say Nocturnal Animals, I'm done. I am. I am going to say Nocturnal Animals because I freaking love that movie. And I feel like (laughs) it's funny. It's one of those movies that, like, you know, when you get really excited to show someone a movie that they've never seen, like, I showed it to my boyfriend and and it ended and I was like... You know, like, like waiting for him. And he's like, yeah, I didn't like that at all. And I was like, what? Like, it's so good. And it's one that I've watched multiple times. I think she's stunning in it. I think she's gives an incredible performance. I just think that whole film is just like, I love it. I love it. A girl like, after my own heart. That's why I knew there was a reason. But like, <laughs> no, I love Nocturnal Animals, and that's happened to me multiple times where I've shown that movie, and they're like, "Why are you so obsessed with this movie?" And I'm like, Why are we not all talking about Nocturnal Animals? It's so freaking good. I mean, I could do a whole podcast just about Tom Ford and the fact that that man needs to make more movies. No, that is one of my favorite perform. I was gonna, I thought you were gonna say Arrival, which of course is like the oh. performance that everyone talks about. But I love her in Nocturnal Animals so much. Um, and I think there's just something so endearing about her. Like, you just want to watch her and you just yeah. root for her. Yeah. And like, yeah. Even the other day, <laughs> we were watching Talladega Nights. Um, and I forget that she's in that every time I watch it until she's in that. And I'm like, oh yeah, there's Amy Adams. I forgot she was in this. And she's just so charming, even in that like simple and like simple of a role and silly of a film. Like you're still rooting for her. And like, she's so charming and so just, you just want her on screen more, you know? I mean, Miss Pettigrew lives for a day. Delightful. Sunshine (laughs) cleaning. Delightful. I mean... She's I can go on like, and on. Yeah, she's she's great. Um, and I think I think people feel that way about her. You know, I feel like everyone is on her side. Like I feel like she's that she's that woman that like you're always rooting for and everyone's rooting for. And for like some reason, she just like how has she not won? I don't know. Because I think that's exactly I think we take her for granted. Like yeah. we're like, well, of course she's gonna people are gonna vote for her, so right. I'm gonna vote for somebody else, and then she doesn't win. Um, right yeah we need and, to get away and it's like she's so reliably good that it's almost like when she's it's like not shocking that she turns in a good performance so we don't feel like we need to 
um, reward her when she does, you know? Right, right, totally. Okay, who's your next pick? Um, who do I want to go to next? I want to go somewhere maybe a little bit controversial, but I know you okay. love her too. Um, and she was originally on your list, which is Rosamund Pike. <gasps> yes. And I wanted to put her on my final list because I just think she is very compelling and she makes really interesting choices, not just in the roles that she takes, but like when in her actual performances, I feel like I can never really predict like what's going to happen next or like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I like, just find her or like who she's going to be or like who the character is going to be. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. She's very like complex and like difficult to figure out. And I do think she, I mean, she obviously got the nomination for gone girl, which is one of the all time great, not just performances, but the fact that she actually got that nomination. Oh, yeah. I think she was very close to getting nominated for Saltburn. I feel like she was like right on the cusp. Loved Saltburn. Um, Loved Saltburn. So I feel like with the right role, um, and I mean we've talked about this before, but like British actors and actresses do very well. So she'd have sort of like the BAFTA yeah. support. So I just feel like with the right kind of role, and I think what's really interesting about Rosamond is I think she's one of those people that could either do really well in supporting or lead. Mm-hmm. And then she could do something like a full on drama or like a dark comedy. So I just, I feel like there's a lot of different scenarios where she would do really well. And again, that versatility. Yeah, I agree. I think she's the versatility. It's the versatility thing for me. Like, I think she's so good at also like not being like typecast if that's even like just like the simplest way to say it like I feel like her character and we kind of like talked about this already but I feel like her character is different every time where like I don't feel like I can predict what she's gonna do with it you know what I mean like even if you feel like you know who the character is or what it is you don't really know where she's gonna go with it and I love that about her so agree agree I I I'm I can see it and I'm as I said, manifesting it. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, okay, so I, my next one is another, I think, obvious pick, but again, for a good reason, is uh, Saoirse Ronan. I just think, gosh, she's so, like, I think about how young she is and how many nominations she already has, four nominations. Um, and she's just one of those that like kind of like amy adams like we were talking about amy adams she's so like i just have such high expectations every time i see her in something that i just feel like sometimes almost almost everything she's in is kind of always in the conversation not always Mm -hmm. but like it's somewhere in the conversation right like it's people are talking about it no matter what it is or whether it's done well or not. There was that one, there was that movie that came out recently with, was it her and Paul Mescal that like didn't do well? Yeah. Faux. I haven't had a chance to see that one. I didn't either. I was excited about it. I didn't know anything about it, but I saw that they were the two leading people and I was like, Oh, this is going to be great. And then it didn't get good reviews. And I was like, wait, what? And then I didn't see it because it was like, Oh, this isn't what, like, I think everyone thought it was going to be something that it wasn't. Um, and I, I, like you said, I still don't really even know what it's about, but, um, I like really was first introduced to her for me. It was really Lady Bird that I saw her and like kind of fell in love. Um, Lady Bird is just one of those, like kind of made for every young woman, right? No matter when you see it, it'll like hit you in the feels. Um, and then truly she was just made to play Joe in Little Women, like, I think she was made for that role. Um, So, yeah, I think it's coming for her sooner than later. Like, I think she'll be one of those that, like, very soon wins. I don't know what for or when, but I can see it happening for her. Like, definitely. It's not, this one is, like, a definite, right? It's not, like, a maybe or is it going to happen? It's it's a definite. And we're just waiting for it to happen. Yeah, she's been compared to um, Kate Winslet a lot, like basically oh, yeah. throughout. Her, and I totally could see that kind of trajectory for her. Yeah. And speaking of, I feel like her Oscar win could very well come out come this year. What is it? I'm trying to find. It's I think called The Outlook, the movie that she has this year that there's a lot of Oscar buzz about. But I think what is yeah The Outrun. Um, oh okay. Yeah, that's coming out in 2024. 
Um, so she, I think, is going to be a major, major player this year. Look for her name um, this season. But what I think is so interesting about Sersha is that I could genuinely make an argument for her winning every single one of her Oscar nominations. Yeah. Because um, I've, like, Atonement, even, I mean, that movie came out when I was pretty young, but it was one of those, like, who the heck is that? Because I think she's only, like, six months older than me, which, what is she doing with her life? What am I doing with my life? But, <laughs> but uh, no, so, like, I feel like Atonement, she could have won for that. Brooklyn, phenomenal performance. Lady Bird, as you said, like, which is, like, she's not even the kind of person that you would immediately think of for something like Lady Bird, but she just, like, completely knocked it out of the park, and then yeah. In Little Women, she was phenomenal. So I, there's not very many actors and actresses that I could say every single nomination was deserved, and that's like yeah. absolutely the case for Saoirse. Yeah. So I st rubber stamp everything you said. Yep. Yep. It's waiting for her. It's just not engraved yet with the name of the performance as well. <laughs> so true. So accurate. Yes. Um, who's next for you? Uh, I'm going to go with somebody kind of obvious, maybe, but that's Ryan Gosling. Oh, um, yes. And we've talked about this before. I think it's he's had a very interesting Oscar trajectory in that there was like a large gap between the Half Nelson performance, a Half Nelson nomination and the La La Land performance nomination. But I think post La La Land, we've been in this like era of major Ryan Gosling appreciation. Um, he just picked up an Emmy nomination for hosting SNL. So I just oh think my God, yes, he's having that. a moment and he, he um, people are really kind of like looking upon him with this maybe appreciation of, again, that range that he has. Um, we talked about first man with Claire Foy, but like I would have nominated him for first man. I would have nominated him. hundred percent. Yes. I would have nominated him for Blue Valentine. I would have nominated him for Lars and the Real Girl. I mean, I can go on and on. I just feel like there's just such a depth of a filmography there. And I just, maybe he's a Leonardo DiCaprio where they're waiting for him to get a little bit older. I don't know. Or like, they're going to really make him work for it. But just given the amount of kind of projects he has going on and the people that he's working with, I just... I, I feel like it's closer now than it was before. Yeah, no, he's, I agree with you. He's totally having a moment. And again, just such, like, he is one of those that, like, you you can't meet someone that doesn't like Ryan Gosling, right? Like, he is having a moment in that way, too, where he's so likable on screen and off screen. Like, it's just that thing, again, where, like, I think everyone's rooting for him right now in whatever way you want to put it um his time on snl was so funny like we mm -hmm. sometimes like rewatch that beavis and butthead scene just to laugh because it's so funny and he's so good like i just i mean yeah he's truly having a moment and i'm here for it so yeah um okay my next pick is another woman who i am truly obsessed with and that is Florence Pugh um we were trying to think of our like I think this might be and this is gonna blow your mind but I think her performance in Little Women might be my favorite like, well I don't think that's a bad choice at all like she that's one of those ones that like there's someone else that wait I don't know okay she's my favorite one for the women I think um, that performance, I just feel like she should have won that Oscar. <laughs> and I feel like she made the Amy character, like, likable in no other way that, I mean, that film has been done, what, like, four times this is the fourth remake of, remake of it. And I just feel like she brought so much more depth at, to that character and maturity to that character where it's like Amy's not the character you root for and she made us root for her in certain moments and that's because it was Florence Pugh playing that character like that's the way I feel about it and whenever it's something like that like um where I feel like like I said I do feel like Saoirse Ronan was like meant to play Joe in that in that film but there's something about Amy like Florence Pugh as Amy that just like blows my mind I don't know and that movie is like a comfort film for me now that's like 
if I'm home sick on a winter day, that's what I'm watching kind of thing, right? But it's also, I feel like, such like a successful in like a meaningful storytelling way, like direction, all the things. Like that film is just perfect to me. And I, she should have won. <laughs> she should have won. Um, 10 out of 10 analysis, no notes. I will have <laughs> like neck pain by the end of this episode because I'm just fer- ferociously nodding at everything that you say. But no, I, I think you're exactly right though. You really hit it where you said the depth that she's able to bring, because I even think of something like, don't worry, darling. Yeah. Like, like she, that performance is such a fascinating performance and she makes that whole movie work when it shouldn't work, but it's because of what she's able to deliver and what she's able to express just like through her eyes and her facial expressions. And even yeah. something like, I feel like she, even black widow, like she brought so much to like a, a superhero role and like a lot of actresses can obviously not do that. Um, I think if I were to like pick something that I would have given her a nomination for, it would have been um, Lady Macbeth. So like even just, and I think what she's 18, 19, very young when that movie came, but like, I just, from the beginning, she was just one of those people again, that made me go, who is that? Where did she come from? And I feel like she has been destined for like a Hollywood major Hollywood moment which i mean she's having but i feel like she's gonna get even bigger like oh like we're sure we're still in the early stages of the florence Pugh career which is super exciting to think about it is it is and i am super excited for we live in time i wouldn't let myself watch the trailer though because i was like i don't i want to go in as blind as possible because um andrew garfield is also one of my favorite people ever um more to come on that um but i just didn't want it to like be ruined for me or anything like i didn't want to see anything in the trailer that like you know some because sometimes the trailers are like too long if a trailer is over two minutes i'm not watching it you know what i mean um so do we think there could be possible like conversation for her and that maybe I don't know too much about that movie. So is it like a prestige you think? Or is it more of like a thriller? I don't think it's a thriller. Um, it's It seems kind of more like romance-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, like kind of like a... I don't want to like easily compare it to, to something, but I, kind of like a marriage story type of thing, it seems like. May, not like in the same sense, but kind of like a... A look into a couple like that do you know what i mean uh, well those are my favorite types of movies right. so like that just sold me um that like, i'm interested to see like do you think it'll be more of like a period piece that might be or do you think like a midsummer or like a more contemporary because it's interesting that she can do both really really well and i wonder like what would be the role yeah i think this i mean it, okay if i read this to you the like we live in time the one i was talking about with her and Andrew Garfield. If I read this to you, it's going to sound like pure Oscar bait. It says an up and coming chef and a recent divorcee find their lives forever changed when a chance encounter brings them together in a decade spanning, deeply moving romance. Okay. Like I, that- I need that today. <laughs> <laughs> have you not seen that? Have you not seen this? Like you haven't seen people talking about it no that hasn't been on my radar but it's an now a- it is it's an a24 film it's on my radar for sure but like i said i would not let myself watch the preview because i was just like i can't let anything be like revealed too soon to me um but yeah i'm super excited for that like i said i'm obsessed with andrew garfield too so um back to your question what was your question again something about her um Oh, if we think it's going to be a period piece or something more contemporary? I mean, I feel like something like this. Like, I feel like she could be in the conversation just from, like, the very brief, like, part I've seen of it. It just seems like it could be a moving performance. I don't know. Also, like, the things that she... Like, did you ever see... Um, What was that one where she had, like, really dark hair? She was kind of... Fighting like, with my family? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, no, it was, she was playing like a, oh wait, well, of course, Midsommar, loved Midsommar. Um, may, uh, what? 
Um, she's like a scam artist. No, I don't think I did, but that sounds super compelling. Yeah, I just, yeah, I feel like she has r- range. And then what was the one with um that she did recently? It was like, oh, a good person. Did you see that? No, I didn't. I wanted to. She seemed like she was going to be really good in that, too. And, like, it was kind of like a, like, heartwarming performance. But, I yeah, that was. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say I heard that was one of those movies where she was the best part of that. Yeah, episode. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, I think she's another one that, like, who knows? It could be, like you said, like, it could be a period piece kind of thing that she wins for. But I can also see her winning for something like this one with Andrew Garfield. Like, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I'm excited about it, you know? Um, you'll have to look it up after this and, like, tell me what you think. Yeah. Um, okay. So, next on my list is somebody that I am going to be talking about all award season. I'm pre-warning you, Erica. <laughs> and that is, that is Coleman Domingo. I talked about Sing Sing when we talked about South by yes. Southwest with Alejandra. Um, months have gone by. It's been four months. And I think about that performance pretty much like once a week. Like there was a meme on Twitter that was like, you know, your life is on fire. And it's like me thinking about a random performance. And that's <laughs> me and Coleman Domingo. Like I literally just will randomly. It. Um, so I, and I, I'm saying this right now. I, July 22nd, it's going to be hard for me to find a performance that is going to impact me as much as that performance has in Sing Sing. So I have... Like a very strong feeling that this could very well be the year for Coleman Domingo. But I put him on my list because even if it's not this year, I just believe it's it's going to be something. And I mean, he won an Emmy for Euphoria. And I just feel like he's one of those actors that is the standout of pretty much any project that he's in. I mean, love for him propelled Rustin to like that Rustin nomination. Mm-hmm. And something that I talk about a lot and it's a big part of the Oscar conversation, whether you like it or not is who can campaign, who can go to all the events and charm people and kiss the babies and do all of that stuff. And that is absolutely Coleman Domingo who is like majestic. I mean, I was, I did not get to meet him, but I kind of saw him in person and like, he just has that magnetism and everyone was trying to like go take their, go get their picture taken with him and like just adores him. And he honestly too has been open about the fact that like this is the kind of thing that he wants so like with the right role like he is going to be campaigning and and doing what he needs to do in terms of that which yeah as I said like that's part of it and I think that that's a big consideration that I've made as I was making my list and so I just think if not this year and I think it should be this year because again his performance in Sing Sing is that good um it'll be something very soon and Again, something that I think Coleman has with a lot of other people on my list is I could easily see him in a lead role or in a supporting role um, and being like a standout supporting player. So I feel very, very strongly about Coleman Domingo. And to be honest with you, of the actors on my list, he's the one that excites me the most in just what he's doing and the phase of his career. And I think there's something really cool as well when actors – achieve a level of fame or notoriety a little bit later on because it's almost like they're able to grasp it more or appreciate it more or handle it better in some ways and I just think that that's like a really interesting thing to see especially because a lot of the people that we are talking about are a little bit younger Um, but it's interesting to see how that life experience manifests itself in performances and I think that that's why Sing Sing stands out to me is because you could just tell it's infused with so much like life and pain uh so very fascinating person on screen and off and yeah i president of the coleman domingo fan club (laughs) no i love it i also if you're watching this on youtube you can see me shaking my head the whole time and agreeing with everything you're saying i think the point that i want to make and this is weird to say because when i say this it's going to sound like i don't think this way about like any of the other male actors we're talking about or any of the actors really but there's also this like you just watch people with him and you can tell they respect him in this way, right? Like how you're saying like he's so charming and he can do the campaigning and stuff, but there's also this thing where like you watch him and you can just tell like he like 
commands this respect from everyone around him like it's so interesting like he just oozes like like gravitas yeah yeah Mm -hmm. it's like really really interesting and yeah like you said like that's such when i saw him on your list i was like oh such a good pick like how did i not think of that um yeah i think you know like you said he's he's doing all the right things and he's coming in at the right time and you know um having his moment and i i i'm excited to see what he does next so yeah great pick great pick um Okay, so now I move into um, my actor category, and I am going with Barry Keegan. Um, he is one that, like, this sounds weird, but he's one of those, like, that's always stood out to me just because I think he just has such an interesting look, right? Like, I was a fan of him. Like, I remember really becoming a fan of his, excuse me, with that film um, American Animals. Did you ever see that? I did not even realize he was in that. But now that you say it, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, kind of the main character-ish. Um, so I've just, like, been a fan of his for so long. Um, the Banshees of Insurance, like, I just loved that movie so much. And I love that it had the nominations it did. It bums me out that it didn't win anything. But I think it's one of those that we've talked about this, like, right, where people are still going to always be talking about it just because, like, that's the type of film it is um it's so different and unique and like fun and funny and i just feel like he was the perfect character to play the character that he played in that and i was so glad that he got a nomination he's just one of those like every time i see him in something i'm excited about it i'm like okay what does this weirdo have cooked up for us now right like he's just such a little weirdo and i love him for it like and i mean that in the best way like please don't let that come across like like a negative connotation like i mean it in the best way that he is such a little weirdo um salt burn too like honestly i thought he was gonna get a nomination for salt burn because i love salt burn i thought it was great um that's like so up my alley um and i just feel like he was also perfect in salt burn um i was kind of bummed that it didn't really get the recognition i thought it deserved um i don't know i just think he's great and i just think like now that he's gotten that first nomination i just feel like from here on out it's like it's he's gonna just be in the conversation even more and more right Mm -hmm. And I think um, what's interesting, again, about Barry is that he's one of those actors that it could be a lead, but also he has such strong, like, character actor energy, and he's, like, a chameleon, and he can kind of, like, do a lot of things and blend into a lot of different roles and a lot of different films. So it's just, yeah, it's good. I I feel very strongly that he is, like, one of those that is um, going to – it's not just like a flash in the pan Oscar moment for him. I don't like he's coming back. Yeah. And he's one of those like I look at him and I'm like, yeah, he's an actor. Like, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like he is he is like an artist, you know, where there's some people like, you know, like I'm obsessed with Margot Robbie. I'm obsessed with Florence Pugh. I also can see myself being friends with them where like Barry Keegan is like so out of like my league of like people that he's like he is different you know what i mean like he is an actor and like in a different way if that makes sense like do you get what i'm saying like he's just a different kind of person like he's meant to play these like really interesting unique special roles where like like you said he has that character actor energy and like chameleon like you said he can kind of i think he can morph into whatever he needs to be and he can also, you know, do the Sabrina Car- Sabrina Carpenter music video too. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Which again, like, so weird, but I love it, right? I don't know. Um. So next, I'm gonna go with somebody that kind of fits in the Coleman Domingo category for me, which is Anjanu Ellis Taylor, um, an actress that I have been obsessed with. I mean, I I want. I think the first thing that I saw her in was Ava DuVernay's When They See Us, um, but just every role she does is interesting she got a nomination for king richard not only would i have nominated for her for last year's origin i would have given her the oscar that was my favorite movie of the year last year one of my favorite movies ever and 
I felt very confident about putting her on my list because we saw like this surge of support for her. And I feel like she was very close to getting that nomination last year. And we saw a lot of industry people being like very compelled by her and like, you know, fighting for her to get that nomination. Like Angelina Jolie was like hosting a screening for her. So I think she has a lot of respect from people in the industry and she has Nickel Boys coming out this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, which is going to be book? it. I did. I did. Not my favorite Colson Whitehead, but um, the material is there for her for, for like a very compelling role. Yeah. And so, I mean, it very well could be this year. And if it's not this year, she just has, I think, the like makings of a kind of supporting actress win somewhere. I mean, I hope it's a lead actress win. I'm not saying that she is not she would be more than deserving and capable of that. I just think she fits the mold of somebody who would would win in that kind of a performance. Um, and I just, I, I, she's just so compelling. And again, with Coleman, I feel like you see her, like the empathy in her performances and like the depth and just like, she's worked so hard to get to this moment in her career and she's very intentional about her choices and like even in her interviews. And I just, I find her so incredibly compelling. So I, I feel very strongly that she is going to be an actress that um, is going to get that, that win and that like coronation moment. No, I think that's a great pick. I agree with everything you said. Um, she's, and I feel like she's like, I don't want to say kind of flown under the radar, but like she was not one that like immediately came to mind when we were thinking about these things. But then when you, when I saw her on your list, I was like, that's another great pick. Like, how did I not think of that? You know? Um, that's why I think if, if like Nickel uh, Boys has like a proper camp- campaign, which I think it will, I feel like people are going to be like, oh yeah, we love her. And she's given all these performances and like, we missed our chance last year. Like, let's not do it right. again. I feel like she has an IOU and like these years of support that is built up and it's going to pay off when the moment arrives. Yeah. I think that, I think that's exactly right. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, okay. My next one um, in the male category for me. Um, and this is one that I think <laughs> there's going to be some discussion here um, is Bradley Cooper. Um that he has I did not realize and this is I think what we're going to talk about a little bit he has 12 Oscar nominations because he has so many with like not just with acting right and we we mentioned this earlier we could do one you know we could do one on like directors and we could do one on like writers and you know I think there's a lot of talk outside of the acting and uh in the acting categories but I do think like I mean, he blew me away in A Star is Born in all aspects of it, but definitely with his acting ability. And I just feel like, uh, I don't know, you know, we we're kind of talking about Amy Adams, too, in this way, where we're talking about, like, we just have such high expectations for everything they do that we kind of take it for granted. Like, are we taking Bradley Cooper for granted? <laughs> like... I don't know. I just feel like he's so good in everything he does and not to say like he's overlooked because he's not like, right. He's got 12 Oscar nominations for all types of things, even outside of acting, but it's just like, are we gonna, is he, is he too like popular and too much of a star? Like, I don't know. What is it about him? What yeah, this is this is like such a fascinating uh case. Cause also you could make the argument that like he's like over nominated, where yeah. he's been nominated for things that may not even be his strongest. I mean, like American Sniper, for example. Right. So um, so yeah, you could make the case that like does he is he even deserving of the 12 nominations? And then I was just thinking when I was listening to you, I was like, if they, if we would have just given him the Oscar for a star is for it. We wouldn't be here. Like, we could have avoided so would, much. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. And, like, I truly feel like he deserved it for that. Like, that's Absolutely. one that, that yeah. I'm, like, how did that miss? Like, I and I feel like it had everything around it, right? Like, it, the song was everywhere. Mm-hmm. The, like, the Lady Gaga of it all. Like, it just was very, like, it seemed like how could that not happen for him? because of just the power that that film had, right? Um, 
I think he is one of those cases where I think the like good lookingness of Bradley Cooper is working against him in this case. <laughs> I think I think the fact that he wants it as bad as he does is working against him in yeah. Because I think maybe there are actors that are like better at hide or better at like playing that aspect of it, but I think it's just so clear that it, he's like chasing for it. Right. Um, well, it's yeah. like it, I feel like Maestro didn't hit the way he was expecting it to. I think it kind of became a joke that like it was like a joke that he studied like um conducting for yeah, six for, years. Yeah, yeah, for six years. Like it, they cut that kind of became like a punchline, right? Like. Can I tell you, just anecdotally, I was watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, like the celebrity edition, yes. and it was John yes. Mulaney and yes. Nick Kroll, and they had a question about Maestro, Yes, and I think it was like John Mulaney, he goes like, oh, he studied, and he goes, maybe he shouldn't have. When they were 100%. That's so exactly I, what I was yeah. just thinking about. But I've heard it. It's funny because we we watch that too. We're huge John Mulaney fans, um, obsessed with him. Um we watched that too, like specifically because we saw it was John Mulaney and we made that joke. I was like, man, poor Bradley Cooper. Right. Like, like that should, I feel like with other things that would be celebrated and it's with him. I don't know why it's like a punchline, but it is. But I mean, Leo had that phase of his career yeah, too, where he was true. doing like J Edgar and like very obvious Oscar Beatty. So like maybe he just needs to go away for a while and come back. Um, or do another, like I think about like when I watch Wedding Crashers, I'm like that's Bradley Cooper playing this like, what, what? No, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Was like if you would have told me that the guy from Wedding, we would be talking about the guy from, yes. I would have been like, uh, yeah, insanity, insanity. Yes, yes, no, totally. Like, but I and I love him in that kind of stuff too, or like I love him in the Hangover films. Like, does he need to do something like that again and give us that like kind of dumb love feeling about him instead of like he's trying to be too prestigious? I don't know. But I, all of that being said, I still think there's an Oscar somewhere for Bradley Cooper. <laughs> um, I am I'm predicting like a Brad Pitt trajectory where he like wins for producing something first and then mm -hmm. he'll win like a supporting later on. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Um I, I'm a fan of his. I like him and I think I think he's he's got one in his pocket. I just don't know for what. I think that's a good guess on on your end. Solid choice. Um, sorry about all the jokes, Bradley, even though I, I retweeted <laughs> so many, so many memes. So many of them are my fault. Um, <laughs> let's talk about somebody that you originally had. You're probably waiting for me to talk about this person and I've tortured you the whole time, <laughs> which is uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Riva, Rivo, excuse me, our yes. wicked queen. My I alphabet. I love Cynthia Revo. I think, I, I mean, I've, and I've been following her career since she was like on Broadway. Like I remember when she won her Tony um, and then when she did like the fast times at El Royale and she was making her sort of transition to film, I was like, okay, she's a star and the Oscar is inevitable. Um, and then she got like the nomination for Harriet. So I don't know if it'll be for Wicked, but it's going to be for something. I mean, she's just, again, another one of those like, just waiting her like anointment and waiting for the win. I think I would love nothing more than for her to win an Oscar for playing Alphaba. That would, first of all, I am sorry. I'm not sorry for the person I'm going to become when wicked comes out in film. I am going to wear my witch hat to the theater. I've already asked Tyler. I'm like, are you going to be embarrassed to go with me? to the theater with my witch hat on he's like yes but I'll do it <laughs> because this like I am so excited for this film all of that aside I think if she I think she could I think I think she could be and is that just me being like blindly hopeful and os optimistic and also because I'm just so excited for Wicked yeah but I think you know I think the Academy still loves a musical. I think Wicked is so powerful. I think she is such an incredible pick for Alphaba. I think she has it in her. I do. Yeah, I don't think that's... 
it's funny uh, when I was at the movie theater this past weekend and I saw the Wicked trailer and my friend just goes, oh, I love Cynthia. Like that's yeah. like the power of Cynthia where you just like stop and you're like, oh my God, I love her. She's and I think so endearing. If it's not for Wicked, it'll be like one of those things where she has like a massive IOU in her back pocket. So it'll like build her up even further. Um, and I say this with love. I don't think she's going to outperform. Okay. Wait, how do I want to say this? I think she's going to outperform Ariana Grande in, in like a really interesting way where I just think she's just going to be so more, much more powerful in that. Like there's not going to be a dynamic where they're competing. I think she's just going to totally like blow the roof off the place. And I think Ariana uh, Grande is wonderful. I think she's a great pick for Glinda, but. I've seen a lot of like Oscar talk that in my opinion is like overestimating Ariana Grande and underestimating Cynthia Rebo. Like mm. I, I think she's going to be a major power player and rightfully so. Yeah. I, I'm rooting for her, obviously. Um, Alphaba is just like my favorite character ever. Um and Can I, we get you to wear your hat on the podcast? Absolutely. <laughs> Do you want me to go get it right now? Like, I know exactly where it's at right now. I can pull, pull it out and put it on. Like, Honestly, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's my, like, it's, like, a nice witch hat that I got when I was in Salem. Like, it's a knitted, like, perfect black witch hat, and I'm obsessed. Um, yeah, so just watch out for who I become when that when that film comes out so um, many times in my life that I've wished that I could teleport and watch a movie with you and now I'm really upset that I, I will not get to <laughs> I know oh my gosh you should just come here just for that <laughs> maybe I will I've told you before don't tempt me too I know. Hard. Or you know what we should like what's the halfway point between us we could meet halfway uh, we'll, we'll we'll find it <laughs> Um, okay, so next I am going with one of my favorite actors and long overdue, which is Mark Ruffalo. Oh, and I feel so confident that the I like we saw the like Robert Downey Jr. check mark, and I feel like Mark Ruffalo is next. He is beloved in the industry in a way that I think is like not talked about enough and i think about all um is is it all and i read the book and i can't but the emmy what was it all of this is true or something um which is one of my favorite things that i've seen and now i'm like butchering the name but it was the Derek. let me me look see on france um hbo miniseries but i bring that up because he did not do any emmy campaigning he was off filming another project and sweeps that emmy season pretty easily um do you so remember I just, what year that was? I know that I know this much is true. I know this much is true. Yeah, which if you have not seen that, is one of my favorite miniseries of the past. I don't know decade. He was phenomenal in that. But he plays like two people, right? Mm-hmm. I think I did, did. I watch this. It's extraordinary. Yeah. So I just think he. Um, and I mean, we saw him get nominated for Poor Things. Like I just think he is so good and elevates everything that he does and is just again respected by so many people that people are going to want to give him the win for something yeah uh so like he just needs like an oppenheimer like he needs something that's like gonna win pictures that he can like swoop in and go along for the ride where we can go okay this is the year uh yeah but this is another one that i just as soon as like he was probably the first name that I wrote down, honestly. I just, really? I feel, yeah, I, like, very strong. I love this pick. I love – he's one of those people that, like, I'm just excited to see him in anything he's in. Like, you know, he's the guy from 13 going on 30, and he's become this, like, mega movie star, and I love it. And I think he is – like, I think about, like, Spotlight and how much I love that movie, but then I think about something like Poor Things, and I think about how different those characters are, and how, like, deserving both he is in both of those roles, and yeah, I think this is a great pick. This is one that, like, again, when I saw this, when I saw him on your list, I'm like, Erica, what are you doing? Like, why didn't you think of him, you know? But again, I think he's one of those that, like, you know, 
I expect a lot out of him every time I see him. So, like, why wouldn't I expect him to be part of more, like, Oscar contending things, you know? And it's interesting that because, like, when I think of Mark Ruffalo, I don't really think movie star. I mean, I guess you are right, but I think he does have, like, character actor energy to me. Um, and I think he, he does have, like, a chameleonic thing. And, I mean, even, like, in The Avengers, like, he was way better in those movies than anyone should have like he you know brought so much to that so mm -hmm. i'm i just adore him and i think there's a lot of love for him that's like waiting for the right moment to peak so yeah yeah um i think this next person for me is kind of along the same lines as this where you're saying like you need him to be a part of something that kind of just takes off because i feel like that's the way this person will get a win and, and this is like kind of also I feel like a little bit of a silly pick for me but I love him and whenever I see him in something I get really excited because I don't really feel like I see enough of him ever but it's what Woody Harrelson like I love Woody Harrelson I was introduced to him in please tell me you watch this too Will and Grace when he was Grace's boyfriend did you oh watch you're Grace? right Oh my god. That was I, not my introduction to him, but I remember loving him in Will and Grace. I just thought he was so funny. And like I don't I maybe I saw him in something else before that, but I just thought he was so funny. And then of course, like, you know, he was in True Detective and like made that super famous and like made it what it was with um Matt McC Matthew McConaughey. Um, and then I really loved him in Three Billboards, and I love that he got that nomination. Um, admittedly, I have to admit the other two things he's been nominated for, I don't think I've, I haven't seen, I don't like neither of those ring a bell for me. Um, which was the people versus Larry Flint from 1996. Did you see that? I've not seen that. And then the messenger from 2009. Have not seen that either. Yeah. So <laughs> I haven't seen either of those, but it's like, I feel like as silly, he just like kind of is like a silly guy to me. And I love him when he's like a silly actor, but then I also like love him in these like serious things too, right? Like I also just think of him like, do you remember, have you ever seen that video of him realizing that the Hemsworth brothers are related? Yeah. Like, it's one of my favorite that like I've seen that way more times than anyone should have seen it, but it's so genuine. Like that moment of realization for him is just so pure. Um, again, this has nothing to do with his acting abilities, but I do think he's he's great. And I feel like he's kind of one that kind of flies under the radar, but he's totally for me, like one that could come. I think and that's the thing is like I feel like he could be one of those people that like you know, we're talking about this, right? And we're talking about in the next five to 10 years. But I also feel like he's one of those people that like could be acting well into like the older years of his, his mm -hmm. life and like still and maybe be in a conversation for something. Yeah. Seeing him on your list was a big light bulb moment for me where I was like, oh, yeah. And I think he you're totally right. He does have that Ruffalo or even like the McConaughey thing of like mm -hmm. he's so beloved mm -hmm. and it's just the right. And I mean, this is going to be very controversial, but and as much as I love Sam Rockwell, like his performance in Three Billboards was incredible. And there was a part of me that was like secretly hoping that maybe he would be the supporting actor that would win instead. Um, yeah, I I would love to see maybe he's not the person that I'm like the most confident about, but maybe the mm -hmm. one that I would be the most excited to see yes. that actually come to fruition. Exactly. Yeah, that's how I feel about him, too. It's like. I'm not really sure, but he's on my list because he's been nominated and he hasn't won. And it was like, oh, I love this pick. Like, I'm going for it. Um, do you have another one or did you do two in a row? I think this is my last one. This okay, next. go for it. Yeah. So I'm I'm cheating. I'm going to do a twofer because there are two actors that I just couldn't pick between. And I think they're in very similar veins of their careers, which are Paul Meskel and Austin Butler. Hmm. Um, if I had to pick which one would go first, I would say Paul Meskel just because he's has like a, he's working a ton. He has a lot of stuff coming out. Um, and I just think he's so fascinating. Erica, listen to this. Like Emmy nomination for his first TV role, wins the Olivier for his first um West End production, and then gets an Oscar nomination for his first film. Um, yeah. which is just crazy statistics. But I just think people adore him. I mean, we talked about All of Us Are Strangers. He, I would have nominated him for that. He's just a, 
a very interesting performer. Again, has kind of like the Barry Keoghan thing where he can be kind of the supporting weird guy or like the leading actor. Um, and he's people are just fascinated by him, charmed yep. by him. Yep. He's like top of the list for a lot of casting directors, which Austin Butler, very much in the same position. Um, I wrestle every way more than I should with like the Brendan Fraser, Austin Butler thing. I love Brendan Fraser. I defend that Oscar win quite a bit, but I, um, but I, you know, would have liked to see, that was one of those things where it's like, you could, Austin would have been equally deserving. And I just Mm -hmm. think, I mean, we talked about him with Dune too. Like he, he's another one of your like little weirdos. (laughs) He's such a little weirdo and I love him. So, Mm -hmm. and again, like, when you look at like the people that Hollywood is the most interested in casting, Austin Butler is like the top of every list. Like they want to just put him in everything. And so I think, yeah. And he's got that like old movie star look in the same way. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, but back to Paul Mascow really quick. The thing for him too, that I think is kind of different than everyone we've talked about is that like, he puts these like little tiny indie films on the map. Like, and I love that about him. Like he's not doing these like, major like blockbuster type of things he's doing these like you know little film not little films but he's I feel like the reason why these films are being talked about is because of him if that makes sense and like it's that thing where I'm like okay I'm trying to find this movie because it's not playing in mainstream theaters and I have to go to like a little indie theater to try to find it kind of thing where it's like more of like a soft-spoken um complicated type of film where it's not hit you in your face messaging it's more like these films that you have to sit with and um you know watch with a different lens that he's doing these roles and these these films that are that that just speak to people differently there's a vulnerability to paul mescal and his performances that i think are really interesting and i think like male actors maybe are not allowed to do as much yeah to like emote the way that he does you've seen have you seen normal people yes i love and i read the book i read the book in literally yeah. one day and loved that mini series like loved it yeah but there's like a like a soft a softness maybe yeah. isn't the right word but there's like an empathy so that delicate. he is able yeah. yes yeah that I think he's able to pull off that we just don't see. Um, and, and like after Sun, like he just does so much with his facial expressions. Like it, that movie like haunts me. Yeah. Uh, much like all of us strangers. All but, of us strangers for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you're saying like, I think just his ability has pulled up these projects that may have not otherwise gotten a lot of attention, particularly after Sun. Like, I don't think that, he would have even known that movie existed if he yeah. didn't, if he wasn't in it. Yeah, um, so I just, I think he's just so compelling. Um, and then Austin, some, I think Austin is so interesting because he is, like, very much, like, a classic movie star. Mm-hmm. And talk about a guy who can, like, command a room. Like, my, he just, like, exudes charm where you're, like, who the heck is that? And Yeah. Um, you it's just like I look s- at him and I'm, like, you're not from this time. You're, not, <laughs> yeah. you're from a different time. I don't know if it's from in the future or in the past, but like you aren't supposed to be here yet. Like, yeah, I don't know. He just has this look about him. I I can't put my finger on it. Um, Even Masters of the Air, which I was not a huge fan of that miniseries. Like he was so compelling in that. Yeah. He's again, I I watched a few episodes. I think my boyfriend watched some of that. Yeah. I I watched some of it with him. But um, yeah, so I just I couldn't I couldn't choose. But I think in terms of if we're looking at like young Holly or like the most up and coming, those are probably the two names that everyone thinks about. And I just I think they're both headed for that trajectory. Like absolutely, probably yeah. in the next few years. To be honest, like I would not be surprised if it's like the next role for both of them is it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, I think those are both two really great picks. Um, my final pick is a man that I mentioned earlier and I still to this day will defend that he should have won an Oscar for something he wasn't even nominated for. And that's Andrew Garfield in the social network. He Mm -hmm. should have won the Oscar for that. That performance is incredible. 
um, like off the charts incredible. And that's one that I hope the Academy looks back and is like, yeah, we were wrong. We cheated him that year because he deserved it. Um, I loved his nomination for Tick, Tick, Boom. I thought he was incredible in Tick, Tick, Boom. Loved it. Can I just have a second to talk about Tick, Tick? That movie, like what he's able to do in that movie. I love the movie, but his performance in particular, like that movie I would not have loved as much if it wasn't for that performance. It's such an amazing nomination. And like the fact that he is like a strong enough name to get nominations for like movies that don't pick up a lot of nominations, I think speaks to his Oscar power. Yes. But that's my favorite performance of his and a movie that I've revisited so many times. And I just adore it. I need to rewatch it because I haven't. And it deserves a rewatch. And I know it's one that I would love even more on a rewatch, but I just haven't gotten around to watching it again loved it like blew me away when i first saw it but it deserves a rewatch and i need to give it one but i just the social network i mean if you know me at all you know that i'm weirdly obsessed with that film and i it's probably my most logged film on letterbox there was a time in the pandemic where i was literally watching it every single day shanon don't judge me it was like a weird thing i went through it was like i was studying it to write a thesis on it i don't even know but i like was so obsessed with that movie. I still am. Like, I would watch it right now. Um, I'm just so, so, so obsessed with that film. I think it's perfect. Um, yeah, like, I, <laughs> I don't even know how many times I've watched it. An embarrassing amount. But um, but I'm not embarrassed because I love it. And I think it's fantastic. Um, but I just think he's so incredible in that. And I just will forever be, like, defending his honor for that Oscar. <laughs> the fact that he wasn't even nominated. Um he was also nominated for Hacksaw Ridge, which honestly, I think I'm—I think I've seen it. I can't put my finger on it, but I like feel like I've seen it, but I don't have any memory of watching it. But I don't know. I don't know. I just he is one of those people that I love him and everything he does. I think he is also a really like kind of I don't want to compare him to Ryan Gosling, but kind of in a way where he has that like just like boyish charm about him where like he's so lovable in that way like it's I mean he's a beautiful man just like Ryan Gosling's beautiful but he's it's like not threatening in a way where like we were talking about like Bradley Cooper like is kind of this like figure of male Hollywood where like I don't feel like Andrew Garfield has that energy about him and I mean that in a, in the best way. Um, no, you're absolutely. There's like an approachability or like yes. a again a vulnerability. I've been using yeah. that word a lot, but that that is what I think of. And like he's like my favorite Spider Man. Yes, he, yeah. only fi- yeah. Spider Man films I've seen are his. But yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah. So and I I'm just like looking at other things he's done. Like, please tell me you've seen Never Let Me Go. Please tell me you've seen it. I haven't because that's one of my favorite books of all time. Truly one of my favorite books of all time. And I'm afraid to watch it because I don't want it to like, you know, mess with my love of the book. But I will. I'll watch it. I'll watch so it. I that's been a, a book on my list forever because I've never read the book. I saw the film first because I saw the film in um in undergrad. It, like I watched it for one of my film classes. And I just remember like our professor being like, This is one of those films that, you know, sometimes people in class, when they see it, they need to sit here for a while afterwards. You can sit here as long as you need to. Like, you know, it was just one of those, like, I very much remember how much it moved me. And, like, it's one of those that I tell people, like, you have to watch this, but, like, prepare yourself before you do. I don't, having not read the book, I still feel confident in telling you that, like, (laughs) <laughs> the film lives up to it because it's the film mm-hmm. is incredible um but i also understand where you're coming from if it's like a book that you feel so close with that you don't want to like you don't want to you know i think those that's one of those things where like i need to be in the right headspace but i'll yeah. it'll happen eventually that's <laughs> like many of these oscar wins it'll happen eventually <laughs> yeah exactly it's incredible i think you should should um give it give it a watch when you're ready and and you want to but when you watch it think about that 
that was the same year the social network came out. So think about him in the social network. And then when you see that performance, I just, I don't know. I'm just such a big Andrew Garfield head. Like I love him so much. And I just, he's one, he's one of those, you know, like, it's like, okay, I'll watch anything that he's in because he's in it, you know? Um, And I just, I feel like I will always be trying to just like justify that he should have been, the winner that year for the social network and i just i don't know i feel so strongly about it but i think that's because i'm so obsessed with that movie i don't know but he's my know. he's my final pick what a way to end our list <laughs> what a way andrew garfield the best the I best the best of the best um what are you looking forward to like movie wise tv wise anything um well i need to make my way through several of the emmy contenders that i yeah. haven't seen so I'm excited. I still haven't seen Ripley, uh, mm. which, like, I feel like I don't know why. I just need to get to that. But uh, as I always talk about books, I've been reading um, The Road, Cormac McCarthy's The Road. I have that, and it's been on my shelf forever, and I haven't read it. It is. It, like Likewise, I think it was on my shelf for, I kid you not, 10 years before I finally started reading it. And I like it very much. And Viggo Mortensen and Cody Smith, Cody Smith McPhee from *The Power of the Dog*. Um, they they're in the movies. So I'm really excited to finish up the book and re- watch the movie. So that's kind of my book movie combo for the week that I'm. Yeah, really maybe for. I'll maybe I'll um I'll read that soon and we can chat about it. We still need to start our like book club, so maybe that's the first one that we do. No, <laughs> solid, solid, solid. Um book i will say just something that i'm thinking about real quick before we wrap i've been thinking a lot about like whether hollywood is truly a meritocracy like whether it's like based on talent or luck or good look you know obviously it's a combination of all those things yeah but i think in looking at our list i feel like the there is like such genuine talent and like these people have propelled themselves to this level for a reason Mm -hmm. and I don't know. It just makes me super excited for there's a lot of talk about like the state of cinema and all this kind of stuff. But I just feel like I, I'm looking forward to what these people are doing. And it, it like when I look at somebody like a Coleman Domingo who's able to have a breakthrough, I'm like, OK, like talent does kind of win in the end. I know that's cheesy and sappy, but that's my brand. So that's kind of the my <laughs> what I'll be brewing on for the next week or so. No, I think that's perfectly said. Perfectly said. Um, well, yeah, I need to do some Emmy watching, too. Um, yeah, Ripley, I'm, it's funny that you brought that one up, because that's one that, like, when it came out, I was super excited about it, and it just kind of, like, fell off the radar. It was one of those, like, you know, when you watch a lot of things with your partner, and, like, it's like, okay, we're not gonna, like, argue about what we're gonna watch, and it's like, okay, if I don't really, if I'm not really in the mood for that, like, it keeps getting pushed to the side, you know? So that's one that I need to definitely sit down and watch too. Um, and honestly, I just find myself lately trying to like not do rewatches. Like I just find myself like, oh, I want to rewatch The Bear, like just all three seasons, you know, just because it's so good. Or like I do want to rewatch Severance before it comes out, but my gosh, it's not coming out till January or whatever. So there's time for that. But there's just like, I need to pull myself away from wanting to rewatch things just because it's like a comfort sometimes, but also like when it's something that it's like good and you know, it's good and you love it. You're just like, Oh, I just kind of want to watch that. Cause I don't want to start something new and be disappointed. <laughs> um, yeah. You know what I have waiting for me on my DVR after we get off this podcast is, the latest, ep- is the latest episode of The Bachelorette. <gasps> oh, is it good this season? Should I start? Should I, should um, I start? I don't know. I really like Jen, and I'm excited that we have our first Asian lead. Uh, it just mm-hmm. bothers me that the villain of this season is, like, a Persian guy, and I'm like, this is not the representation that I asked for. Oh, man. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, but maybe, yeah. he'll, maybe he'll turn it around. Sometimes the villain know. can turn it around. But, but they, make, of- they make them the villain even if they're not. So, like... This is true. All of this to say is there's like a time for hard hitting stuff and there's a time to to watch your fluff. So yes, yes, 100%. So well, this is really fun. I you know what, as much as I struggle to make lists, it is fun to discuss with you and talk about them and make lists that you know, 
they're not written in blood, Erica. I have to remind myself that. Like, I feel like when I make a list, it's like, this is it and I can't change it. Um, but yeah, no, this is really fun. Thank you for chatting with me. Hopefully we'll have an episode however many years away where we look back and say, remember when we said that this person was going to win an Oscar and here they are. So um, hopefully yeah. we'll get one of those this year. Hopefully I'll either okay. somebody, somebody that we put on our nomination list or our mm -hmm. win list, hopefully we'll, we'll get somebody. Um, thank you as always to everyone who has listened. Please follow us on social media, follow at in session film. Uh, I'm at, Shadon Larkey, Erica is at Iraq Reviews. Subscribe, tell your friends, rate us. Um, as, as I mentioned every time, there's a ton of really good Chasing the Gold columns uh, com coming out, looking at different categories. Uh, Horizon, Erica, which I know you have seen and I haven't, there's a lot of passion around that film among the, the Chasing the Gold crew, um, so I hope you guys check that out. But thank you so much for giving us this platform to nerd out about things that we really love yeah. and following along with us and i just feel very grateful to be here today <laughs> me too. with you as always yes me too I, I can echo everything you just said so yeah it's really fun and we'll look forward to chatting with you guys next time so take care mm -hmm.